Today I'm going to be disassembling my KM2A Yanmar transmission. I did this last week, but I recorded the whole thing without any sound. So I'm going to redo it because I really want to make a video about it. And uh, I didn't put the seals on, so it's not really done yet anyways. I just closed it back up so I could fill it with oil and so it didn't corrode. So that's the project for the day. The first step is to take the shifting mechanism off. Then here's the bolts. The bell housing comes off, then the gears come out. Since I've already taken this apart, everything's loose, I'm just going to use this electric impact to zip it off. So, first shifter. Take the shifty mechanism out. There's the shifty mechanism. I measured this with a good caliper and it's it's within tolerance. Uh, there's a little bit of scoring on the forward side. I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not. So what I've been told is just to to flip it and use the other side. So that's what I'll try. But I don't think there's any reason to take this apart. The springs still feel pretty good. Here it snap into gear. Okay, next step. Take the bell housing off. And again, since I've taken this apart, I'm just gonna, already I'm just gonna zip it off with the impact here. bolts for the bell housing are a little bit longer than the bolts for the shifter. The bolts for the shifter have the good old Yanmar gray paint on them, so they're not hard to tell apart. Now, I'm guessing, I'm going to have to cap this out. Rubber mallet. That was a lot easier than the first time I did it. And there it is. There's the gearbox. The next step would be to take this nut off. This should come off before the bell housing. Um, then you can put the whole thing in a vise and this is a, a cold chisel nut, a lock nut, so it locks into a spline on the shaft. Remember these are left hand threads. Alright, this comes off. Alright, and there it is. There's there's the gear cluster with the, the drive shaft, forward and reverse. Um, I'm just playing with it a bit. Now I've actually lapped this last time I did it, so I'm just seeing how fast this engages into gear. This did not go into gear this easily last time. And it's just the gravity of the cone and this shaft is, is locking on, which is kind of cool. All right, so I'm gonna throw this in a parts washer and just get all the, all the oil off of it. And just for fun, we'll go through the procedure of taking this apart, taking the cone off and putting it back together. So the first step is to take the reverse gear off. Now it's important that you keep track of which gear is reverse and which one is forward. I'm gonna put it in the vise on the, the nut and then use a puller to pull the gear off. Now we'll get the puller. So, we'll just put the puller on here, get it set up so it's grabbing the gear, not the not the cone. That cone is a thousand dollars, so you want to be careful not to mess it up. Pull this gear off. I expected this to be like a, a propeller that would just pop right off, but it just slowly kind of works its way off the shaft. Alright, it's loose. Okay, so got the bearing, got this washer. Now there's a little lip on this washer. It's important that the lip stays against the bearing. And the cone. And we've got this needle bearing and then this thrust collar. So I'm going to take the needle bearing out and kind of keep all this together inside the cone or inside the gear. Now I've already lapped this gear, but when I first did this, this was a mere finish. Um, the reverse side was pretty pretty slick. The, the forward side was it absolutely mere finish. Now it's a little bit roughed up because it's been lapped already. Now the cone itself is still held on by this piece. So next thing we do 
take this out, put the cone aside, that's the gear assembly. All right, now, this is my uh, output shaft coupling. I just have some cheap carriage bolts that I'm using in here. That way this shaft coupling can go inside the vise. Hold them down, tighten it up. Okay, now I've got a good place that's fairly strong to put this on. There, now we'll work on the, the forward cone. So the first thing, we gotta take this nut off. Now remember, this nut reverse threads, so don't turn it left and, and over tighten it. Now typically you would take a cold chisel and chisel it out, out of this little keyway, but this one's already been done. Okay, we'll grab a big wrench. Now remember, this is reverse threads on this nut, so you don't wanna turn it left to loosen it. You wanna turn it right to loosen it. It messes with my head every time. Come on, brain, turn it right. Oh, yeah. First comes a nut. Oop. I just start tightening it. Nut comes off. Now this nut is the same as the nut on the output shaft. And see it has this, it has this um, lip around it and this lip gets hammered into the keyway on the, the shaft. Now this nut is $27. So I was told that you could just flip the two nuts. I bought one because one of the nuts I had didn't look great and 27 bucks, not too big of a deal. So now, now this is all pressed on. So now we use the puller to pull the forward gear off. That's next. So I want to be very careful that this puller doesn't hit the cone. Okay, there we go. All right, so we pull. There we go. That just comes off pretty easily. I'm going to keep my hands on it all so it doesn't explode on me. There. Simple. So now what we have, you got this washer, bearing, and this pin. Okay. And this, I don't know if that's a thrust washer or what it's called. Alright, let's put this aside and then the gear. Okay, this is the forward side, and again, I've already lapped it so that uh, mirror finish area is kind of gone, so it looks good. Now we'll take the, this, this little bearing off. Okay, there we go, and we'll put all this stuff aside. Okay, now the next step, which I'm actually not going to do, because there's really no reason to, the, the next step is to take this this piece off. So what the manual says to do is put the puller on right on the cone, not in the middle of it. There. And pull up on it and that will the cone will pull this this piece off. But I'm not gonna do that because I just don't need to take this apart anymore. I just wanted to demonstrate the process of taking this this gear spline apart. So that's as far as we're gonna go with that. But but anyway, so here's the cone. Uh, again, this has already been lapped, and it just it feels different. Yeah, my gloves ripped, but yeah, this moves. That's the play. Um, I've measured everything. Everything's within spec, so everything should be should be working. Um, now we'll put it back together. Before I put this back together, uh, I want to take a look at the cone. Now this is before I lap the cone, and it, when I put it in the gear, it it actually slips pretty easy. I used this Permatex valve lapping compound. The first thing I did was just apply a fairly generous amount of the lapping compound to the gear. Then I applied a fairly generous amount to the cone as well. Um, I don't really know how much to use or if you can use too much. I would imagine what you want is just to have everything covered with the compound. I actually think I'm kind of trying to polish the cone and the gear with my finger a little bit as I'm applying it but I just just I think the idea is you just want to make sure that you you have compound covering everything the permatex lapping compound that I'm using starts out with a coarse grit and as you lap the 
cone. The grit is supposed to break down into a finer grit. I don't know if it's the best or the worst. It's just what was available and what I used. Now that I've got compound on the gear and the cone, I just put the gear in the cone and I I turn back and forth. Um, I just basically use the weight of the cone, maybe a little bit of pressure, and I just keep kind of turning it back and forth until the cone has made five full revolutions in the gear. And that's it. So this is actually the first time I've ever lapped anything. Um, I just I was able to find this procedure on YouTube somewhere. Um, the rest of the KM2A rebuild, I haven't found any other videos out there, so I'm, that's why I'm making this. So enjoy. Next, I'm just going to put the cone aside and not let it roll away. Again, that cone's $1,000, so you really don't want to mess it up. Okay, so everything... So after the lapping compound is wiped off, I just put the cone back in the gear just to kind of see what it was like. And yeah, it definitely felt different right away. I could tell the cone just grabbed right onto the inside of the gear. Um, put it in, turn a little bit, and yeah, you just it locks right in. So I definitely think this is going to help solve the problem of my transmission slipping. All right, there it is. Um, let's see, we've got our clutch cone. A forward gear, needle bearing, thrust washer, bearing, 